uh, version. So I have Pascal here from Caplina. He is going to jump into his demo. Um, before that, just a couple of notes. Make sure you drop any of your questions in that Q&A box. Uh, we'll get back to them at the end of the session. Um, and feel free to drop a little emoji as Pascal's talking here. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. Uh, very inspiring stuff there. Uh, so I will go ahead and, and hand it over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Cara. And yeah, uh, so glad to be here. Um, calling to, uh, in from, from Zurich, Switzerland. Um, I hear most of you are uh, based in the US. Um, so happy Friday, everyone, I guess. Um, and yeah, it's a pleasure to talk to you about um, text analytics in general and about what Plana can do to help you with your, with your needs there. So, um, yeah, what, what is what is Kaplena? Kaplena is a self-service tool that um, allows you to analyze open-ended feedback uh, really efficiently. So, what is open-ended feedback? Well, you all know your multiple sources. Um, we really are uh, agnostic to any kind of, of open-ended text that, that may come. So, it, be it from customer satisfaction, online reviews, employee feedback, or social media posts. Um, we can ingest all of that, spit out relevant topics and do an accurate analysis um, through a process that we call augmented intelligence. And more on that, uh, I will show in, the, in that demo just later on. And uh, finally, as output, um, you can get uh, really pretty dashboards that are interactive and uh, allow you to shine in, in your corporation. Yeah, so um, how do you get uh, data into Kaplena? Um, well, this is luckily also easy, um, either through a file or through our many integrations. Um, I will sh showcase a couple of them later on, but we have uh, quite a few data sources connected already to Kaplena and many more to come. Then comes this uh, process that I just mentioned, this augmented intelligence process. Well, what is it? Um, our AI is not just ChatGPT spitting out some random gibberish uh, or understandable gibberish, but just something. Um, it actually queries for your input. So um, it allows you really to, uh, using our AI, discover topics, but then refine them and interact with you uh, to create the most actionable uh, result possible for, for your data. Uh, more of that just in a minute in, in the demo. And then when you're sort of happy with the, with the result, uh, then uh, you can use our uh, state-of-the-art visualizations to, uh, to, to share them around. But best is always to show this in the app. So uh, quickly on the import, um, I mentioned here the integrations uh, where we have different sources like for the online reviews, you can directly connect them here for yourself or for your competitors or you versus your competitors. Your Qualtrics surveys or any other apps that you may want to connect using Zapier. Um, for this uh, demo, I would like to uh, work on a classical NPS study, but this is also applicable obviously for online reviews, for employee feedback surveys, uh, etc. In this case, the study is about um, consumer electronics and it's really an open study um, where we ask customers the classical NPS questions. Um, why did they give this rating? And for this, um, we'd like to really dis let Kaplina discover topics and show us what is in there and give us an actionable analysis. But we can also uh, add topics from let's say previous study or somewhere else, or you have um, some kind of top-down uh, approach where you already know which topics you want to track. Um, so you could in principle also add additional topics that you may already have. But in this case, we're just going to, to generate and uh, let our AI sift through the feedback. Um, this particular study also contains sentiments, so meaning they have positive and negative mentions uh, even some mixed ones, like people liking a particular aspect of the product, but not another one. Um, so we definitely want to, to do the sentiment analysis and thus we click here, yes. And now uh, Kapena goes through uh, all the rows in, in the data, all these responses, and really finds the, the most relevant topics that are in there. 
Um, it's not just like a, it's not a generic template or anything. It's really based on what is actually in the data and what is in the data itself. We can see here on the right. And um, to to sort of kick off this augmented intelligence uh, approach, um, we have now first something presented by the AI. But now I will give my input as a study designer, as a market researcher. And for example, um, we structure here a bit uh, the categories. You can see here Kaplina has put out a two-level hierarchy of topics and their categories, uh, these, these tiles, these, these larger buckets of topics. And I can now, um, for example, hide certain categories. So for example, I don't like this one, liking is too generic. So I will just um, remove this. And what happened is that the topics that were in there were automatically redistributed to uh, the, the other categories where they match best. So for example, then the TV uh, went to the product and the design as well. So after this first step, we go to the next step, which is then to, um, to look again through the topics and reduce potentially similar topics to avoid double counting um, or any kind of other uh, overlap issues that you might have. So let's say here, um, ease of use, no issues, sounds kind of similar. Um, we're just going to, to remove the no issues one. So I'm done here, um, meets my needs and I like it. We'll also just merge these two together. And we can worry about the naming, etc. cetera, later. Um, for now, this is just done. And also, but here, like the, the brand, I, I want to have some granality here. So I will keep familiarity and reputation uh, separate. Like I want to track sort of how many people are even familiar with this brand. Uh, in this case, it's Samsung. But, um, uh, it might be any, any other uh, versus the, the re reputation. So I'll just mark this as done as well. And then maybe here, services, a lot of features. I will just remove this as well. And um, now I can check again, sort of how it's starting to take shape in the assignment, but we're not done yet with all the process. Um, we're hitting next and now uh, we finally get to the stage where uh, we can also add additional topics, what we have here. So let's say I want more uh, granularity. Um, maybe I first um, need to do one more the cleanup, I forgot this in the previous step, but actually for this particular case, TV and products is the same topic uh, because the study is around TVs. Our AI cannot know this because uh, we asked uh, this in the, in the questionnaire, but um, in this case, products and the TV is actually the same thing since this study is only about TVs. But easy enough, we can just merge the two and uh, then go ahead and add some granularity. Let's say I want to understand more what is here in the ease and convenience. Um, ease of use is a bit generic for me. I really want to understand what are people talking about when they talk about the, the usability of this particular TV. So I click here on generate more topics and let the AI generate more topics around ease and convenience. And while this is generating, I have to move to reactivate the lamp, otherwise I look really dark. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Um, and it will now go through uh, the rows again and spot for any potential new topics that are um, in this category ease of use, but have not been covered yet. Uh, this is especially also handy if you think about maybe uh, in a tracker where you're um, data is also evolving. You may have new topics appearing uh, over time. So this is really useful then to, to generate. So now we can see here in, in ease and convenience that we have a lot of additional topics generated. Um, again, here I would go through and do a little bit of a cleanup. So ease of navigation is very good. Um, ease of understanding, I would probably um, uh, remove this, this is more of a duplicate. Um, ease of setup is really good. It's a separate step in the user journey. Um, the rest I would just remove again. So I had, uh, I added two additional topics by just um, letting the eye generate and then uh, cleaning up. 
So now after this process, obviously I can go ahead and generate more topics, uh, interact some more with this part of our AI, or um, which is what I'm going to do now is to uh, hit save and go to the next step. So once we've sort of defined this initial set of topics and categories, um, the AI will sift through the entirety of the feedback, which might be hundreds or might be 100,000 uh, rows and um, assign then these topics along with the respective sentiment uh, to the individual roles. Uh, we can already see here um, an output where we see a graphic that um, highlights the sentiment per topic uh, in the data. Uh, but I actually want to, to dive in uh, even more. So I want to, to, to take a look at the individual rows and see uh, what happens there on, on that level. And here I can see that for most um, topics, it's already doing quite a good job at assigning uh, them to individual roles. Uh, maybe here I would work a bit more on the naming such that when I present this to uh, my stakeholders that they will really understand what I mean. And here, for example, topics is a very general name. So I would say uh, this is more about general satisfaction. Um, meets my needs. We're also going to turn on here the sentiment for this particular topic. Um, and for example, here are a lot of features that's maybe uh, not the, the best um, formulation for this kind of uh, uh, topic. So I would maybe say here a variety of features uh, might be more um, actionable than for uh, management or for, let's say, the, the, the product team. And let's say you have very specific uh, topics, uh, a lot of granularity and really involved user feedback, then it might be really beneficial or it is really beneficial to also do a little bit of fine tuning of our AI. How this is done is really simple. Uh, you don't need to be a data scientist or call us or anything. It's really just um, looking here at the individual uh, rows and either saying that this is reviewed, I, I agree with this, um, or uh, changing. And for example, here I see that probably I should have uh, added some more topics. There is nothing around the app. Um, so um, yeah, this is certainly something I want to add. Let's say I add it under features. I add something around the app and then um, what the AI will do in the background is take out this new topic app as well and assign it to uh, matching roles as well. And it will take this input that I've reviewed this row now um, manually, it will take this as an input to do another small training to improve uh, the results on the entire data set. So this will make it sure that it's super accurate on the sp very specific data, not just any generic AI that does this sort of one trick pony just assigns everything once, but actually will learn from your input on the specific study that you do and any potential new data that you might add or a new wave of this tracker or uh, new responses coming in through your CX program. On top of uh, this, what you then can do is obviously you can export, also export using our API. Um, but furthermore, you can use our uh, built-in visualizations to, um, to share the results uh, within your company. And we have a variety of charts uh, built in, into the app uh, that you can also download uh, or embed into dashboards. One of them is this sentiment comparison on two level. Um, and for example, here for this particular TV, we quickly see that um, sort of the quality um, is obviously a big topic where they still have a bit of mixed bag uh, uh, responses. We can also take a look in the chart what people say about uh, the screen quality, for example. And um, by that, we can then even drill down further by adding filters, um, combining this in a dashboard, uh, etc. And also, we can do dynamic comparisons. For example, I want to do, compare different producers uh, like the overall distribution here in blue versus um, versus a Google phone 
uh, this would actually be a uh, TV. Um, or here the Samsung one. Um, and also compare for the different sentiments um, to really get a better understanding of how my features, how my price is doing versus the, the overall or the, the competition. We also have further um, capabilities in, in visualizing um, structured data as well. Here is like here is a driver analysis on the satisfaction score. Um, we can quickly see that here screen quality is a negative negative driver on the NPS score. Um, here will be uh, the the likelihood to recommend this brand. And so it's really um, neat and easy to use on that front. Uh, and even going even more into detail, you can even have a uh, analysis on correlation between different topics. If they talk about screen quality, do they also talk about sound quality, which is really the case here. It's quite a strong correlation that we can see here. Is this also the case for negative sentiment? Not so much. It's more in the uh, in a positive sentiment that they then mention both screen quality and sound quality together. And to, to summarize then, you can build these uh, nice dashboards that are fully interactive with filters and with the sentiment switcher, the ability to limit topics shown, um, some interactive elements um, in there, um, also visualizing trends and or even showing individual rows that you can simply uh, take a look at by also clicking on a particular row. Um, and this you can then share within your organization um, or, um, or export. Yeah, and um, to, to conclude, um, what's, what Caplena does is take any form of open-ended feedback, um, be it from online reviews, uh, or NPS surveys that I just showed. And um, it's really flexible in the way that it categorizes and, and uh, assigns these topics to the individual roles. And we found really that it's comparable to what you would obtain if you do a full manual coding. But instead of going through every role, uh, you give these high level instructions by adjusting these topics as I've shown and do a few manual reviews and you very quickly get to a result that you would otherwise only get from a full manual analysis. So it's really um, easy to use and, and helpful for, for any kind of study, uh, be it like an ad hoc or a tracker. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to, to welcome you on the platform as well. Uh, you'll be in very good company, um, like on, on the lawns of other uh, bigger corporates like Johnson & Johnson, eBay, um, we're, we're doing a, a lot of feedback analysis through us and also um, agencies that uh, are um, from small ad hoc studies to large trackers um, utilizing uh, this, this, this tool. Yeah, and with that, um, I, I'd like to already um, thank you and move on to the Q&A with you, Cara. Great, thank you so and much. Now the light is on off again. All right. Oh yeah, now it's it's this back now. I didn't have to do too many yeah. jumping jacks during the session. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right, we have a few questions here and uh, a little bit of time, so feel free to to pop in some more questions as we're as we're going here. Um, we have one from Emily. She says, "Can you get a sense of the size of the categories or topics to understand which might be which might want to be merged to to broken out?" Yeah. So you can get that on the, the last view that I show where, where you really see the individual roles and the full um, uh, assignment. Um, there you have really already an accurate estimation of the count, et cetera. And you can easily remove the, the rare topics. Uh, the interactive part that I showed first, there we only compute on a sample um, to make it interactive. So there, um, you can see it uh, as, I show, as I've shown. Um, uh, actually, I'm still sharing screen, so I can even show you. Mm, you, you can um, go ahead and take a look at 
the distribution easily as well here um, and also filter by individual topics and then simply remove uh, the ones that might be not, not interesting um, or too few for your uh, use case. Perfect, thanks, that's helpful. Hopefully that answers your question, Emily. Um, okay, next question from Aniko. What proportion of the data do you suggest the researcher should review to get the highest possible output? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that depends on, on the size and uh, it also on the, the complexity of your feedback. Some have extremely open feedback that covers uh, really uh, a lot of topics, for example, for um, e-commerce platforms that deal with buyers and sellers, um, it can get, it, it's sometimes really in the details to understand which, what is about seller, what is about buyer, what is about the platform itself, many parties involved, et cetera. In, in these cases, um, we would go up to, um, up to 5% um, of the rows. Obviously, if you have 100,000 rows, then not 5%, but maybe a couple of hundred um, is certainly still helpful. Um, it's really not needed to do, to do more than that. Uh, typically for... Um, for smaller studies, it will be uh, 20 to 50 um, rows that, that you would uh, review. Awesome, thank you. All right, next question from Greg. Do you have any data or anecdotes slash examples of when this sort of analysis of open-ended questions gets better results than using multiple choice questions? <laughs> yeah, interesting question. Uh, like we don't have a particular study on this, but um, at least from what our users are doing and the companies we are working with, it's been clear trend to move away from asking 10 closed questions on individual dimensions, such as here, you would actually need to ask, uh, what's your thought on the design from zero to 10, uh, screen quality zero to 10. Um, it's just, I mean, it gets uh, hard to track and for, for a user hard to fill out uh, and just quite complex. So. Just in, in really in general, people uh, like to respond uh, more to uh, short questionnaires. I believe that is thoroughly covered in the, in the literature. Um, and uh, the kind of results that you get in terms of then the, the driver analysis, for example, um, has been shown to be at least as actionable as this sort of, uh, even more actionable actually, because you can also dig into uh, then these responses and understand even more detail by by reading a few key uh, responses what they really uh, meant and why right all right um follow-up question from Aniko, and this might just be something mm -hmm. that you know you could touch base with on a one-on-one -on -one, but uh, he's asking can you share any information on pricing slash the different subscriptions you offer we actually can um we do have a um, public um, subscription plans. Um, sorry, I'm not currently set up for this, but um, yeah, I can share. Uh, there is, if you go to kaplena.com, um, you will see our, our pricing. There's a free trial for two weeks for everyone um, where you get to, to work on, on your own data even, or you can uh, scrape uh, some reviews for you. Uh, and then um, once you're settled, there is a month. There are monthly options um, from one hundred dollars a month. Um, I mean, we usually speak euros, but um, it's pretty much one to one these days. And um, yeah, if you have higher needs, obviously, then we have bespoke plans for your kind of uh, data and user needs. Perfect. Thank you. It's not not too often we can get into the nitty gritty like that, so it's appreciated. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Question from Alina, did you develop your own sentiment analysis model or are you using something already developed? No, this is something um, that, that we developed, especially for customer feedback. Um, we just see that it, it really makes a difference, um, especially also if you look at very short responses, sometimes by just, if you take a very generic uh, sentiment analysis uh, tool, it will really struggle to, to assign a proper sentiment um, and I mean, the problem gets even worse when you have really long um, responses because they're uh, kind of an overall sentiment really loses also value uh, because uh, it's really then in the, in the topics where the interesting sentiment is. Uh, sometimes they, 
people then talk in the mixed sentiment, right? They, they mention one aspect positively, one negatively. If you take um, one of the solutions that is out there um, pre-built, you will just get an overall neutral, uh, which is then not really helpful because you want to understand which topic was actually mentioned in a positive way, which one in a negative way. Um, I mean, you could do something like split by sentence and, and whatnot, but this is really not, um, still not then as accurate as really going on the per topic uh, level as, as we can offer. That's great. And you kind of uh, actually touched on the, the next question that we have from Sasha here. Um, they're asking, open-ended uh, feedback can be unpredictable, especially when respondents could provide negative feedback in a positive way. How does Kathleen identify the positive negative sentiments? Mm -hmm. I'll read through again. Especially when we could provide negative feedback in a positive way. Um, so that could be like irony, I guess, um, in, in that or sarcasm. Uh, this case is really... Uh, best covered because sarcasm can be very context also specific like where where exactly are they asked and what's the situation so this is best addressed by uh, this our fine tuning where you the user uh, you as a researcher could go through and, and review a couple of rows and then uh, the assignment would uh, would reflect that for example in this case i don't know uh, one hour waiting time is actually very long or it's actually fairly good uh, in, in this context, for example, uh, for the customer support. Um, so that is um, something that you would address through uh, doing a couple of manual reviews. And in general, uh, Complainer always looks at entire statements, uh, not just like assigning a sentiment to a particular word, but really looks at the, the entire text and from there um, infers a sentiment based on trained data that we have um, that is proprietary and um, yeah, that, that we use for, for, this, for this engine. And going off that, I guess, how does Kaplina handle kind of industry specific jargon? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So um, here we already had a bit of industry specific jargon, but it's obviously not as specific as you would, for example, see in healthcare. Uh, but the customers that use for example users for example for healthcare um, where there's very specific jargon um, they then also um, benefit from what other people on Kaplina are doing so if somebody already did a healthcare survey on Kaplina with a roughly similar uh, kind of um, topic or similar kind of uh, sub industry then Kaplina will already understand these particular words um, that they sort of mean uh, these abbreviations that frequently are, are used. And if not, then um, a few manually removed samples will already teach it to, to Kaplina. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then another just kind of high level question, uh, how many languages does Kaplina currently support? Yeah, so natively it supports uh, 33. Uh, most Western uh, languages, European and American, um, uh, Spanish obviously included, and also Portuguese, uh, French, uh, Italian, etc. Uh, and the rest is covered through two translation engines, DeepL or Google Translate, depending on situation, um, which really offer good results. But um, if you'd like to do any analysis, for example, in German or in Spanish, it's absolutely possible. Even the topics can be then in uh, in Spanish uh, or in Portuguese, for the matter. Uh, depends, obviously, also on your audience that you're presenting these results to. Perfect. Well, we are right at the end of time here. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, for my lights go questions. out again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. Um, Just in time. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Pascal. This is really great. Thanks everybody for uh, sticking around and being so engaged with the questions. Um, yeah, I hope that everybody goes to Kaplina, gets that two-week free trial and, and goes beyond. Can't pass up a, a free trial, right? So really appreciate your time today. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll see everybody in the next session. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye.